but you've got to have a better idea. This idea sucks. Some of these Shark Tank scams were easier to see coming than others. No, I and some would have been easier to prevent as well. Liar! Still, there's a lesson to be learned here somewhere, so let's dive right in. Welcome back to the filmy, and today we present five Shark Tank deals that could have gone a lot better. Everyone loves cake, right? <laughs> yeah, sharks are no exception. Bring on the sweet balls. This is probably what James McDonald and Cole Egger, the guys behind a cake ball company called Sweet Balls, counted on when they came to Shark Tank. The best part about our cake balls, sharks, they sell for a fraction of the cost of most local bakery cake balls. They handed out a few samples to sharks to taste and then asked for 250k in exchange for 10% of their company. So you're asking for 250,000 for 25%. For 10% of the company. <laughs> <laughs> After doing a few classic rounds with the Sharks, the Sweet Balls founders got what they came for from Mark and Barbara. Normally you'd call this a sweet success, but the only problem was it wasn't really. I hate you already. What happened next is what happens more often than not. For some reason, Edgar decided to create a competing company called Cake Balls, so McDonald ended up filing a lawsuit against him and the two had a falling out. Pretty much what always happens when there are lots of balls involved sweet or not. These things are good. These are good. Anyway, taking everything into account, the sharks must have felt scammed out of their money and all those sweets must have left a bad taste in their mouths. Up next we have Neil Desai, a real hustler if you will. You see Neil walked out on the stage seeking 50k for a 5% stake in his company and started with a bang. We all know someone who's been cheated on been accused of cheating or who's actually cheated. This obviously piqued Shark's interest, so Desai played a short video. Who is that? <laughs> oh, what is this? <laughs> cheating. What is this? Are you cheating on me? No! I'm not you liar! <laughs> <laughs> After getting a laugh from the Sharks and making sure he's got their attention, Desai explained that his app named Kate, not Kate as a girl's name, but an acronym for Colin Text Eraser, helps keep people's indiscretions, well, discreet. So basically a cheater's app. But in reality, it's a privacy app. Well, let's call a spade a spade. It's That's a cheater's fun. app. I'm okay with that. It's a cheater's app. <laughs> <laughs> now the way it works is, you set up a list of contacts that you want to keep secret. If one of those numbers calls you or texts you, it gets hidden and stored. So if your better half that you're cheating on looks at your phone, they won't see anything. Let's just say, if Tiger had Kate, he might still be married to Elin. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky, huh? Riding the wave of laughter, Desai dropped some cold hard facts of life. He said that 80% of marriages have at least one cheating partner. Now he was asked why he decided to develop the app, as he didn't seem like a cheating kind of guy. So Desai explained that he didn't actually develop, but paid $17,500 for it. And the numbers? So far, we have around 10,000 customers. And you have 10,000 paid customers? Now after some negotiating, Desai accepted Kevin and Damon's offer of 70k at 35% and they shook hands. We'll do 60. Done we'll at do 60. Do it right now. Done right 60, now. 000. Stop it at 70 and we got a deal. We got Done. a deal. Awesome. I love this guy! <laughs> So what happened next? The deal with the Sharks was never finalized and Desai got what he wanted, exposure that boosted the app's popularity. After the episode aired, the app got over 10,000 downloads and the guy even managed to land a deal with law enforcement and government agencies. Ever got so frustrated about something that you decided to go and come up with a product? Well, Shelly sure did back in 2012. After getting tired of having to wrangle one child while holding a towel so another could change clothes in public places, Shelly came up with a poncho towel combo. Makes you wonder how nobody thought of that earlier, huh? It's a bath towel, it's a cover up, it's a changing towel, all in one. Shelly named her towel slash poncho hybrid Show No Towels and came to the show asking for 50k for a 25% share of her company at a valuation of around $200,000. After answering some heavy questions and making convincing arguments, Shelly eventually won over the sharks. I think I see a ton of me in you. I love your drive. I love your passion. I, I relate to you. Like, really won them over. Actually, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write you a check right now. Say what, Lori? 
I'm gonna write you a check right now. Yeah, that was the first time in the show's history that an entrepreneur got the money right then and there. Shelly and Lori worked together for a year before the company went bust and Shelly threw in the towel. Now Lori must have felt scammed, as in the end Shelly didn't have what it took, despite how she portrayed herself on the show. Then on the other hand, according to Ng.com, Shelly also stated, things just didn't go the way she expected them to or the way they were presented on TV. So in the end, it's kinda unclear who scammed who. There's nothing better than co-founding a company with your sister and seeking 100k for 30% of the business from major investors, right? Well, that's what Becca Nelson and Ellie Brown figured when they appeared on Shark Tank. And then but tragedy are you still struck. in those stores? I just Not have to tragedy. ask. Well, we um, struggled with the rate of sell-through. But wait, let's back up a bit. The sisters started their line of novelty fabric stickers called Everywheres as they wanted to find a way to transform their kids' clothes in an easy way and according to their tastes. We've created a product that's the perfect accessory to add fun to any event. Their flagship product, a sticky tie, which is a tie that you can stick onto something. Well, basically, a sticky tie makes an ordinary t-shirt extraordinary. They're reusable. They won't tear or lose their shape. Now, after demonstrating the product and handing out some unique samples to the sharks, the sisters explained why they're here. Their product was selling, but wasn't selling fast enough and they needed help in getting into retail and growing their online business. As soon as they heard more, the sharks were out one by one, with Kevin being the first one. But you've got to have a better idea. This idea sucks. Now, just when it looked like the sisters would go home empty-handed, Mark did something no one had ever done on the show until then. Okay, I'll make you an offer. Why? $200,000 for the entire business. Now, they of course accepted the offer, but soon enough everything went south. They realized they got caught up in the moment and didn't want to let go of their company, so right after the episode aired, they declined Cuban's offer. It's wine o'clock somewhere, so let's look into Pronto Bev, a product that promised wine chilling on demand faster than any other, taking into consideration the specific temperatures different wines should be served at. What do you call a wine expert? A. When Alexander Simone appeared on Shark Tank asking for 100k for 5% equity, the sharks enjoyed his product, but none of them really seemed to be blown away. Uh, give me the bad news first. Bad news first. I'm out. <laughs> one by one, they all started dropping out, except for O'Leary who offered 100k but for 50% with absolutely no flexibility to change the deal. It was a take it or leave it kind of offer. I'm gonna make you an offer, and it's the only offer I'm gonna make, not gonna negotiate, okay? You gotta be kidding me. Being put on the spot must have been difficult, but Alexander still tried to negotiate and countered O'Leary's offer with 100k for 20%, but the fact that he hasn't had any sales yet didn't work to his advantage. O'Leary just wouldn't budge. You have a high probability of making money versus you walk out the door with, without a deal and you are so dead to me I won't even remember this thing. Then out of nowhere, Cuban decided to jump back in, offering 100k for 25% of the company, contingent that Alexander raised the other 100,000. Yeah. Done. <laughs> In the end, it looks like Alexander got what he wanted, unlike Mark Cuban. The company never really started selling Pronto Bev, but added an additional product to the website that also never became available for purchase. Also, none of the people who invested in Alexander's Indiegogo campaign received their product, and many simply called Pronto Bev a scam. Well, sip happens. So what do you think about these deals? Let us know in the comments and we'll make sure to reply. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.